Okay, hello. For those of you who were here at the previous, previous presentation, thank you for uh, staying over for this one also. Uh, a lot of the things you saw during uh, Beat's presentation we'll see in action here and how they can be combined to produce, uh, to actually support specific use cases. So I'm trying to make this uh, present. There's a lot of slides, so I'll be going very fast. I'll be talking pretty fast. <laughs> the idea is to convey that there are a lot of tools, a lot of information, and a lot of uh, capabilities that are already available that you can tweak and combine to satisfy any use case you really have in mind. Okay. Uh, I will be presenting this along with Kyle. Uh, Kyle has been implementing a lot of the incubator projects and he's supporting our forum on Joomlapolis. And uh, he will, he's, he's also available during the process of the presentation and at the end for any coding type questions. I mean, he, since he has developed and he has extensive use of the API, he'll be able to help anybody with any type of questions regarding the usage of uh, Community Builder API to develop their own plugins. This is the agenda I've uh, outlined. I'll be presenting as quickly as possible uh, some of the features. I mean, that actually went through the list and I won't, I'll just go through it again very fast. Uh, what's available for advanced uh, subscribers and group jive, which uh, Kyle will sit up and quickly present, the group jive that's uh, currently available and will be implemented, will be incorporated in CB 2.0 as Beat said before. And I'll be going through the professional add-ons, basically the incubator projects. Uh, very quickly, and as you heard before, a lot of these will also be incorporated in CB 2.0, but they are available today. And I'll be going through our CB subs, which is the paid subscription ma membership management solution we have, and I'll be uh, giving a brief description and demo about the smart promotions that Beat uh, announced today for CB subs. And the whole idea is you have all these tools, but if you cannot actually use them, combine them to support your use case. We have the API, which you can use to cleanly code extensions over the existing functionality and add new functionality. So the whole package is there. You don't have to go elsewhere. If you can't find something to uh, adjust to your needs, you can develop something or hire somebody to develop it for you. Uh, so once back, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I have outlined like 20 use cases, uh, which I feel would be of interest to the audience. So I'll be going through them in detail, uh, showing you you know how to accomplish this, and actually close to half of the use cases are concerning the free CB. So there are things that are already there for free uh, that people can use, and maybe they ha just haven't thought of ways to use them to implement these use cases, and. Uh, uh, finally, we have uh, coding examples and discussion with Kyle. That's towards the end, if there's any interest. I mean, Kyle has a lot of information, uh, maybe specific questions about the API usage and so on. If somebody's interested, we can sit down together even after the presentation. You know, since it's the last one in the day, we can quickly uh, extend it if there's interest. Great. So these are the solution use cases I'll be presenting. And you can see the first eight basically are CB Core solutions. Uh, and then we have another 12 that are in one way or another associated with extra add ons that go above CB Core. Okay. So I'm trying to get to this point as soon as possible. <laughs> That's the goal. All right, these are the core features. There, there's, there's a lot of uh, functionality already in Community Builder. And of course, everybody wants even more, but there's already a lot in there that people are not taking advantage of. Uh, besides the workflow, the, all these fields, that, field types that are already available, there's uh, uh, the connections feature, which allows people to connect to each other, like the friends uh, connect, you know, friends. And there you have uh, user lists, which could be dynamic. Uh, basically, a user list can change its look depending on who's looking at it. So you might create a user list that automatically uh, filters users by the same country as you. So if I'm in Greece, I would see only people in Greece. If, uh, I'm in, if my user profile says I'm in England, I would see only people in England. 
Again, you can set this up today with uh, the core features of CB. Uh, profile templates, of course. We'll see there's a lot of templating already in Community Builder. There's a lot of positions that you can place the tabs on. Uh, a lot of different functionality you can put in the tab, and how, how it appears to the end user, and so on. And of course, there's a lot of integrations with uh, third-party extensions. We do not have a, a private messaging uh, system by ourselves, but we integrate all the notifications with uh, third-party extensions like UDDIM, uh, which is the most popular one, and it's also supported on our forums. So we tend to push that <laughs> because the developer is very close to us, and we basically are always in sync with our releases, and there's full compatibility between the two of us. Uh, and we also, in terms of forum, we uh, work with Kunena. We have uh, our own internal uh, plugin that's part of CB Core, integrates with Kunena, and there's quite a lot of features that go back and forth, and we'll see one of them in the solutions. Now, as uh, this is the same slide that Beat showed before, all of this is currently available. It's free, as in beer. It's very well tested. There's 390,000 and growing community that's using this. It's probably more that I've already used it on different sites <laughs> and so on. The, it, the numbers are huge and it's very robust and stable uh, and it's there today. Now, besides the uh, core features, we have another set of tools which we uh, baptize basically advanced CB add-ons which is available for a minimum subscription basically, the yearly base, but they're GPL, so once they're downloaded, you can install them on all your websites and use them forever, even after your subscription ends. You just won't get maintenance releases and support. Uh, these are the existing uh, packages that we have. There's a CAPTCHA plugin, which you can put in all the forms, registration form or any type of uh, form in Community Builder. There is uh, Facebook Connect and Twitter Connect which uh, allow you basically your Facebook users and your, con your Twitter users to connect using their Facebook and Twitter credentials. So it kind of bypasses the registration process if you want to quickly get online. A gallery and profile book, privacy plugin. There's some extra fields. There were like a dozen built-in field types. We have three more here that are quite useful. Uh, I'll be discussing the file field a little to see how you can basically attach a file to a user profile which is uh, a feature that a lot of people have been asking for and will probably be incorporated in CB2.0 as a core field type. Uh, auto welcome, last uh, latest views, there's a lot of there. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce Kyle here, who will be presenting the group drive 2.3 part. I mean, he'll go quickly through the features. Uh, it's something available today. And let me just give you a, a little history. Group drive uh, basically had stalled its development process. I mean, people had left, and they basically asked us to take over the process and continue this. And Kyle has been re rewriting this for close to a year, huh? <laughs> close to a year, and he's already uh, released a 2.3, which is today available, and I'd like him to present as much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of features packed into Group Drive 2.3. Um, from full category and uh, group management on a back end and a front end level. Uh, you don't have to manage everything from the back end. Your administrators can now manage the groups or their categories directly from the front end as well. I feel that's a great feature to have, especially if you have a lot of moderators on your site. Um, in addition to that, they have the three traditional access levels for groups as you've seen in group drive 1.8 which is open approval and invite only um, each uh, group um, it allows you to have uh, social connections between users um, if, if are you are any of you familiar with Facebook or any of our social sites that feature groups well in a sense it's it's just that, except you now for your community builder site. Um, each group can have their own form support through Kunina, through an integration plugin. Uh, they can each have their own photos so through their own personalized photo gallery. 
a full file gallery, full video gallery, a full wall support. And the wall is very similar to what you would see on Facebook. You can reply, you can edit, you can delete, which the edit feature is great because I know on Facebook it's a problem to edit a post. Um, in addition to that, you have events, and it isn't calendar based, but it's more similar to event list to where it's a structured list of your events and it does allow attendance so you can select whether you're going to attend event maybe you'll attend an event or that you're not going to attend an event um, additionally one of the big requests was auto joining to be able to automatically join a group at registration this is possible through a field you simply add the field publish the field whatever the case and users at registration can select one or more groups to automatically join directly after registration automatically approved and ready to go additionally you can set up uh, trigger systems to where after registration or after a user updates their profile that says okay if this field is checked then put me in this group so you have conditional joining of groups or creating of groups or creating of categories based off a field um, it's completely translatable from front end to back end through traditional uh, language plugins that you would see um, structured the same way CB Sub's language plugin is. So it's very compatible to translate in any language you like. The major feature that I like is in the back end configuration there are overrides. You don't have to have users be users. You can change them with just a couple of clicks to members you can change them to whatever you like groups doesn't have to be groups say you want groups to be states and you want categories to be countries just a couple of clicks and it can fit any type of website you'd like and I'll just go through uh, a couple of these features uh, the package is feature filled it's all contained in a single package once it's unzipped, you can selectively install the integrations. Of course, you don't have to have all the integrations because um, they're all separate. And the back end is completely navigable through the CB Admin Nav module, which currently features CB and CB subs. Simply installing Group Jive and ensuring that it's enabled in back end, you'll have full navigation of Group Jive directly from that menu. Um, being a component plugin, which is a component contained in a CB plugin, uh, traditional menu creation isn't available. So whenever you create a menu in Joomla, it would need to be an external link, and that creates problems with Ceph. What has been added is a create menu link directly to each front end. So at the very top, you'll see your front end URL, and right next to it is a create menu link. Clicking that will generate an internal link inside of Joomla automatically for you. So it's completely Ceph compatible, completely item ID compatible, which is huge when you're coming in terms of uh, module placement based on item ID. Uh, all the integrations can be seen directly from the back end, showing you version numbers, showing you the dates and description uh, there is searching capability so it's uh, easy to see what you have installed whether it's up to date whether it's enabled it doesn't allow you to manage those integrations directly from this menu and it's strictly for information purposes there is complete back-end category management to where you can enable create delete uh, reorder uh, change the state in just a couple of clicks directly from the back end. Uh, back end group management is also a big feature as as you see here this is a little outdated with the image sorry about that. 2.3 actually has a new feature to reorder the groups no longer is it strictly based off the creation date. It was a huge feature that got brought forward in 2.3 to where groups can be ordered how you want them specifically it doesn't have to be based off when that group was created anymore.
uh, backend management of users inside of groups is very extensive. As you can see, you can see duplicates, but they all have a different status pertaining to a different group or category. So you can see that this user is an owner of all of those groups. And all of them can be managed from backend. Even the owner can be changed from backend easily. And you can change the owner to an administrator or to a moderator just by a single click of the drop down arrow. Invites sent out from groups can also be seen from the back end, allowing you to easily see if they've been accepted or if they've been pending for a year. Or you can just delete them entirely. Once you've added the menu, as, as shown earlier using the Create Menu link, go on directly to Group Drive's front end. This will be the first page you see, which is the Categories Overview. And the overview will show you all of your categories that have been created and allow you to navigate through them. Um, additionally, men menu management directly on the right-hand side of each category allows you to unpublish, delete, edit in any way, shape, or form. Um, additionally, My Panel, which is very important, is a way of seeing what categories you own, what groups you own, what groups you've joined, and what invites you have for all of your groups. It allows you to manage all of that directly from your panel. Now the panel is not necessary. You do not have to have it. All this can be enabled and disabled from backend. And you can also manage your panel directly from your profile under the Groups tab. When navigating to a category on front end, you're presented with its groups directly on the right hand side. And I hope you may see a little bit of familiarity with other sites when managing groups. Um, as the menu is kept to the left hand side to keep it kind of streamlined with other sites that use groups. Everything from uh, deletion to editing is also capable of being done from here. Additionally, you can message all the owners of a category directly from here by using message groups. So you can send an email to all of them letting them know, hey, I need you to do something, whatever the case, or telling them that something in the group has changed or in the category that's changed. When navigating to groups, you're presented directly with its first tab. And the tab orders, which you see is videos and events and files and so forth, is determined based on plug-in order. So if you change videos to be order of two and you change events to be order of one, then events will be the first tab seen. So all that order can be adjusted. Um, directly from group, you can join a group, you can leave a group, you can edit a group. Group owners can message all the users inside of the group. Uh, you can uh, go straight back to the category that that group belongs to. There's no uh, JavaScript backward or anything like that. It is a direct link back to the category, which is a problem in older group drive releases. And here you see events and files, which allows you to manage all your events and all your files that have been uploaded to the group. And uh, e each integration has its own access level. You can determine that whether you want group users or group admins to only be able to upload. Here you see photos and wall. Users and invites. And users will display all the users inside of the group. And you can change their permission levels directly from there. You can ban them from the group, which will prevent them from leaving the group and will prevent them from accessing the group. If you ban a user and they're able to leave the group, then there's not any sense in that as they could just rejoin. So once they're banned, they're locked out. And of course, admins and owners can change that status at any point in time. During registration, this is a presentation of the auto-join field, which automatically renders a structure of category and group relations. And it'll display all the groups belonging to a category. You can select one or you can select multiple. It's optional from back end whether you want it to be a multi-select or a single select and it will automatically place them in those groups after registering. The form integration, if the wall just isn't enough and you need bigger discussions and you have Kunina installed, the form integration provides 
full integration with Kunina from access level to automatic creation of the categories. All that needs to be specified is a top level category and it will create the form structure all for you. When messaging users you can determine whether you want notifications to be through a private message or through an email. And this is important because the global notify configuration will determine whether all your messages are PMS or why, whether all your messages are emails. And you can have both, you can have either or, you can have only one of those. So you have many capabilities there on how you want users to be notified. Directly from profile, as mentioned earlier, you can manage all your groups and your categories as seen from the panel directly under the groups tab. You can view which categories you've created, which groups you've can created, which groups you've joined, and all your invites. They can be edited, deleted, all directly from your profile. Um, Group Jive 2.3 is, is a big leap from 1.8. It is a complete restructure from the ground up. It is no longer a Joomla extension, but instead a single contained CB plugin. So additionally, CB plugins can act on Group Jive. It has complete triggers all throughout Group Jive from after group creation, after user join. So a lot of the incubator projects can also act on Group Jive, extending it even further. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, let's quickly continue. I hope you have a better idea of what's happening with Group Jive now. Uh, these are the incubator projects. Most of them are actually been worked on by Kyle also. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll be focusing on some of them that are presented in the solutions uh, examples. So you've seen this slide before also with Beat. Uh, we'll focus on, well, CB Connect you've seen, uh, discussed. That was the open social type application that we discussed before. Uh, we'll be going through uh, the CB query field, for example, is another field type that we'll be going through and looking at how it can be used to provide specific solutions to uh, specific use cases. Uh, we'll be going through uh, the conditionals uh, tab, that's the last one, the conditionals plugin, the last one, and the, uh, uh, where is it, the progress field to the left, which are very important uh, plugins and work very, very nice to present and, and a solution to specific use case. Now, besides the incubator projects and the add-ons, we have what's called CB subs, which is the paid membership subscription uh, solution that we have, which is a, a also a set of community builder plugins that work above community builder and provide uh, a clean solution that works with all flavors of Joomla and what it does basically it allows you to take your existing Joomla website and your existing Joomla content and start charging for access to it. So you can say for example I have all my articles in category A are free and anybody could view them but all the articles in category B for example I will only show the intro portion and instead of a read more, uh, a click here to read more link, there'll be to read more, a subscription is needed. And when a user clicks there, they'll be automatically taken to a CB subs page, which will show them all the subscription plans that are available that would unlock the content they try to access. So it does internal marketing by itself on its own. And basically there are a lot of integrations right off the bat, right in the package with uh, leading uh, Joomla extensions, very popular Joomla extensions like Dockman, Remository, AC Mailing, and so on. Now, what is CP Subs? I mentioned before. I mean, it's basically a powerful paid membership management subscription system which does not really depend on any ACL system. It has its own built-in functionality, so you don't have to install uh, Juga or you don't have to do it on 1.6 ACL. Everything is available right now, self-contained in CP subs. So you, you decide who sees what and when. All this is tightly integrated with Community Builder. So you can use the Community Builder user manager, for example, in the back end to see who's subscribed to which 
membership package and you can even use the community builder uh, mass email functionality to send them a personalized private message so you want to send a message to all your advanced members telling them there's a new release go ahead and download it could be done automatically through CB with the CB sub integration that's built in. The package again is quite extensive. There are a lot of plugins. You don't have to install everything. You install what you need when you need it. Okay. There's uh, basically it's one main community builder plugin, which is the main CB subs plugin. Uh, there's a Joomla plugin, uh, which is a Joomla bot a plugin, and a Joomla module. What the plugin, the Joomla plugin does is basically it helps intercept the ACL control. So anytime uh, an object is rendered for the user, the plugin basically pops in and says, is this user authorized to see this content? And if not, it acts upon it, either sending them to the uh, CB Subs membership uh, subscription to become a, a subscriber in order to see the content, or just not showing the content at all. Depends on the content element. There's extensive documentation. I mean, there are a lot of use cases in here because this is a very powerful system, and uh, I have like I think seven or eight specific use cases, like how to build a download club, how to do a teachers, uh, students type website, uh, how to do uh, support forums which are locked for only members, and so on. There's a lot of use cases that gives you ideas basically on how to use the out of the box functionality. There's some basic terminology I don't have to go through. We know what a payment gateway is, PayPal, you know, authorize.net, uh, 2CO. Uh, there are, uh, you can have subscription plans, donations, or monetary single items for sale. For example, you can say, uh, purchase one copy of a template. You can purchase another copy of a template later on for a different site. So you can purchase again and again. It doesn't have to be a subscription. It will also handle donations in the same package. Okay, uh, plans have a hierarchy, so you can have a parent plan or child plan. So a child plan could be optionally or mandatory, you know, and so on. You can have, you can decide whether two plans are exclusive. Exclusive means if you subscribe to one of those, you cannot subscribe to another. You will have to upgrade to the other, basically. So it's kind of, it's very flexible to decide how you're going to push your membership to make money or to actually support your use case, whatever that may be. Uh, the, the nice part here is prorating. It's built in. Uh, what it does to be fair to the user base is once somebody has paid for a subscription to a plan that lasts for six months, let's say two months down the road, they feel, I want to upgrade. Well, you're not going to charge them the full price to upgrade you can decide to prorate. So the system will automatically calculate the residual value of the existing subscription and subtract it from the upgrade value. So this way your, user, your users will never feel, uh, well, I should wait until this ends before I upgrade. Now, there's no reason for them to do that. Uh, basically, we use this on Joomlopolis. So a lot of the features that you're seeing that make sense uh, made sense to us also. And that's why we implemented them. Uh, this is what the back end uh, uh, panel looks like is basically it gives you a quick view of the sa last seven day payments and basically all these blue items are clickable so you can drill down and see the exact payments that came in for what type of subscription or what type of package this is what the main panel looks like again as uh, we mentioned in the previous presentation all this is XML development driven so and this technology as Bayat said will be incorporated in CB 2.0. Payment gateways, you can have multiple payment gateways. You can have PayPal and uh, another uh, authorized.net for your credit cards, for example, and they could be active at the same time. You could basically funnel the credit cards to authorized.net because PayPal might be more expensive, and you can keep PayPal for the regular PayPal transactions. You can also have offline payment gateways. You know, sometimes your membership uh, sends a check <laughs> and you handle that offline so when the person gets a, when your accountant gets a check they'll give you the check number and you go to the back end and basically close a transaction so they could be activated in their uh, subscription plans overview just a brief uh, example you have a nice summary indicating what the two plans are how much uh, the validity is seven days 24 hours 
months, years, you have various levels you can select from. And you can select the price, of course, free for the first one. Could, you can have free plans also, and you don't have to gather money from here. You can use this to handle your uh, uh, any type of membership. We use it on the workgroup sites to be able to say that language workgroup members have access to language files, that three-party developer uh, members have access to community builder uh, new releases, and so on. Protection basically works. I explained it before. There's a con there's a content plugin that basically intercepts the con the content as it's being pushed from Joomla to the uh, end user, and it basically takes a look and sees is this end user authorized to see this content because there are there belong to one of the subscription plans that actually is authorized to view it. If they're not, then they'll be taken to a proposal to subscribe. If they are, they're shown the content. And again, as I mentioned before, this works with uh, articles, basically any Joomla content. Articles, menu items, modules, components, and it'll even go a step further and do what we call URL parts. So you can basically, and I'll show an example, we use URL parts to basically give private groups in Kunena. Kunena doesn't have private grouping right now. And what we do is we use this feature to provide private groups in Kunena that only members can basically post to. Yes? Actually, we uh, are in discussions with the K2 team. They're, they already have in their SVN CP integration. And we'll be working on plugins to pull in K2 content to our profiles. So you can see the same way we have articles in the profiles, we'll have K2 articles in the profiles. And the next step would be to incorporate uh, uh, permissions for K2 view, viewing. The same way we do categories, we'll do that for K2. So that is planned. CB Articles the Incubator Project currently has K2 support. So you will be able to see your K2 articles directly on your profile. Okay, great. Uh, again, this is the example I gave before where we have two articles, for example, and we see that at the end, instead of seeing a read more, you see a read more, to read more, a subscription is needed, click here to subscribe. Okay, it automatically intercepts the read more message from Joomla and displays, of course, it's all configurable. From language files, you can display any type of uh, text you want here. When you have a module, another Joomla content item, you can decide to hide it or show it. So it doesn't have to show at all. The cheaper plan only sees one module, the expensive plan sees both. Uh, a component, here, for example, we've locked, we said that you need to be a subscriber to take a poll. So when a person presses this button and they're not a subscriber, they're automatically taken to the plan that would allow them to access this content element that was protected. The URL parts I mentioned before, uh, we have, and we would have this on Joomlapolis, we have specific, uh, a specific uh, URL part that basically blocks posting and reading in this category. So what happens is when somebody clicks on there, CB subs intercepts the URL, sees that it's the URL part is protected, and will automatically take him to a similar page to become a subscriber in order to access that. We use that on Joomlapolis uh, to support our advanced and professional uh, members in the forums. The CB subs module, it's kind of a quick uh, advertising. Uh, it basically tells you automatically which subscription you're in and which are your possible uh, options to upgrade. So it's like a continuous marketing pull, <laughs> push. Okay, integration, I'll just, I won't go through this. It's, uh, we, I explained how it works. There's integration with uh, third-party plugins. For example, Dockman. We can automatically say when a new subscriber uh, starts a subscription, then automatically add them to specific Dockman groups, which would unlock download privileges. And when the subscription ends, it'll automatically remove them. So imagine a template club, uh, which has a download area. When somebody becomes a subscriber, they're automatically authorized to download. Once the subscription ends, <laughs> they're removed. 
And all this is done automatically. So if something happens and they go to PayPal and refuse, you know, re, uh, what do you call the, the, there's a term there, when you go to PayPal and you basically dispute the payment, when the PayPal IPN message comes back to CB subs, CB subs will automatically block them. And we'll take them out of that group. Okay. Uh, we don't have integrations with every single plugin. So what we've done is we've produced two two extra integrations, one called SQL integration, which basically allows us to run any SQL statement when a subscription starts or ends. So imagine when somebody starts, becomes a subscriber, you can automatically go to the database and add them to a virtual mart group or add them to a mailing list. And it doesn't even have to be on the web, on the same uh, database. It could be an external database. We use actually this to integrate uh, our 390k user base with our Redmine uh, in implementation, which has all the code and the forge area. Now, if the uh, SQL integration is not enough, we have URL integration, which basically allows us to execute a PHP file uh, and send that information and receive information from it. And it's very, very good if you don't, uh, if you cannot handle the integration just with SQL statements. You might need uh, more logic there. Again, I said there's very tight integration with CB. You can basically decide uh, who sees what and when. So you, can have, you have created all your tabs that you say only teachers get a teacher tab. And teachers could see all student tabs. But students can't see other student tabs. <laughs> this is all very flexible and built in to this integration. So as you can see, you have lots of tools to do almost anything here. And that's the idea behind the presentation. Again, it's uh, totally, the architecture is uh, over a framework, uh, very carefully built. We've seen this before, all the privileges and so on. It's basically built as a CV plugin, extending the API where it, needed to, where it needs to extend the functionality. We recently introduced, and Beat announced it in the previous presentation, what we call smart promotions. This was missing from uh, CB subs. It's now in the later phases of testing. It's very, very powerful. I'll be going through uh, some examples just to understand how powerful it is. I mean, uh, you can have basically two types of promotions, high level. You have coupon related and promotions that apply to every subscriber. You don't really have to enter a coupon, but the subscriber or the person viewing and purchasing has to uh, fulfill various conditions which you specify. So some examples of what can be done. Of course, you can have a coupon, the traditional promotion where you have a coupon and the person types it in and sees the discount and gets it during checkout. Uh, you can give special permission or a fixed uh, a spe special percentage or a fixed amount discount for an offering uh, based on existing subscribers. So you can say, uh, you don't show a coupon, but automatically all my professional members get 20% from my templates. So become a professional member and you automatically get this discount during checkout. You go a step further, uh, one of the conditions could be the expiration. So if uh, you have people that have their uh, subscriptions that have expired and you want to entice them to renew, you can send them a mass mail and tell them, you know, for the next 10 days after your subscription, we'll offer you, for 10 days only, we'll offer you 20% discount to renew. And there's personalized discounts. This is very powerful here. You can, I mean, in traditional coupons, coupon system, if somebody has the coupon, they can use it. No, and no matter how they got it, right? But what we do here is we can personalize the coupon. So a coupon is personalized for each user in a CB field. And only that user can type in the CB field uh, value to actually match what's, what exists. So even if they see the coupon on their profile and they give it to some other user, he won't be able to use it because it doesn't match his profile. And not only that, the price could be also based on a CB field. So you can have 10% 
for some class of users, 15% for other class of users, 20% for a third class, and all this is done automatically with basically one promotion type. I mean, before when we see the summary, we'll see like one promotion type, personalized promotion, and everything else is in the user profiles. So it's extremely powerful, and we went through very, <laughs> very intense discussions with Bea to make it as powerful as possible. I mean, it's something above coupons. <laughs> yes? Well, uh, right, right, right here I'm talking about uh, everything done through CP subs because a template purchase could be, as I mentioned before, you don't have to have subscriptions. It could be a merchandise item, which is a template. Uh, we have a Virtual Mart integration, though, where you could automatically assign subscribers to different Virtual Mart groups to get better pricing. That's built into CP subs. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, Maybe all these tools are not enough. <laughs> There's a powerful CB API, and we have just a couple of one-liners to give you ideas of what everything could do. So basically, I don't know, Kyle, you want to go through very fast this, or should I just go through this? Huh? One minute. <laughs> you have one minute. <laughs> uh, just quickly through it, the CB API through establishing CB user will allow you to call fields, it'll call tabs, and you can call them through different means. You can call a field that's supposed to be rendered on the user list and then call it that's supposed to be on the user profile, and it'll display completely different. Additionally, you can, you can render whole positions of tabs, so you can render the main position and get all the tabs associated with the main position. And this is used all throughout the integrations, especially in group drive. Uh, Usernames, for instance, are rendered from the format name field directly using this exact API. So this is available now for any third-party developer. All right. Now, I'm actually getting to the solutions right now. Okay. This is uh, standard CB. You can display every, any tab in specific positions. You have a middle position, a left position, a right position, the main position, the under all position, and you have like 81 extra uh, line one, column one position, line one, column two position, up to nine, nine rows by nine columns. So you can basically do a lot of, uh, with this built-in feature already. You can do a lot with the layout on your screen and on your profile. Now, uh, there's also display types. Uh, the traditional display type basically is tab. Okay, You can have uh, a div which basically just displays a box around it. You can have rounded corners. Uh, you can have uh, your mouse over will pop up and show this. Various things you can uh, configure right out, the, right out of the box. It's built in right now. You can have an admin tab. So every time you, you, you can have a tab and basically say that only admins and above can see it. So what happens basically is you can uh, place any CB field in there, which contains information about the user, but the user cannot see it. Only an admin can see it, either the front end or the back end. So here's an example. Yeah, here's an example, for example. Uh, this is admin user looking at JFK profile, and he sees the admin only tab with a message. If JFK looks at his own profile, he doesn't see anything. So imagine what type of information you want to handle in there you know, to see quickly see what this person is about, or, and so on. I mean, there's a lot of uses uh, for this. Uh, not on profile tabs. I mean, you might have a tab that says, uh, that contains information that might only appear during registration, and you don't really want to show it on the profile at all. You just place it in the not-for-profile view tab, position, and it won't show. Example, uh, I've basically specified here the position not on profile for the tab. Looking at it from front end, you don't see anything. When you edit, though, you'll see it. During edit mode, you can see the not for profile information. So you can think of how you want to handle this. It's basically information that a user could update, and nobody, it doesn't really show on his profile. But you can grab that information from a delimiter field, which you'll see later on how you can work with that. 
delimiter field. This is one that's a very powerful thing. I remember when we, when we constructed this, it originally was used just to put a separator in the registration form. I wanted some HTML in the registration form, and we decided to do it as a delimiter field. But since then, it's really uh, evolved to something very, very big that's very, very powerful. And basically what it does, it could contain any HTML code. And the HTML code could grab information from a CB field. So it can grab the value of a CB field and put it in the rendered code. Examples. One example is, as I said, the registration field. You could have a horizontal line <laughs> as the HTML code and just show a, a separator between fields or between sections. You can uh, ha put an image in your profile, nicely formatted image or a coupon to show to a user. You can grab uh, content from a different field and show it. One example, I mean, we did the registration separator. Another one here is actually an article I wrote in the Joomla magazine, how to use the delimiters to do a, a Facebook, uh, a Facebook, a YouTube uh, playlist, personalized. So basically what happens, every user goes in and types in his play, playlist ID, and then the delimiter field would calculate the HTML needed and put, subtract, uh, substitute the actual playlist. That's shown. Yes. No, it could be it if it's it's a regular field, and a field can have a value, a characteristic, say, appear during the registration or not. You can decide any field to show in the re during registration or not. If you want it to show, you can just click it to show. Okay, it's very tightly integrated with. No, you should do that. It, it does that, yeah. Okay. These things work. They've been tested. <laughs> they work again and again. Uh, an example, another example with uh, is a promo countdown setup. I mean, profile countdown setup. Basically, we've used this community builder where we have a, uh, a promotion that uh, has an end date. And what I want to do is when they visit their profile to give them a nice timer, you know, only so many days left to do this. And basically, the delimiter field has what's called CB substitutions. So basically, it says if the user, if I'm viewing my profile, if I'm, if I'm the one viewing my profile, and if I'm not a professional subscriber, you see the code, the logic here, I'm not a professional subscriber, then this is the HTML message I want. And there's also JavaScript code that could display a counter. The end result would be if I place this delimiter field under my profile image, okay, it's the HTML message basically I want, and this is the JavaScript, only 33 days until price increase. The next day it'll be only 32 days. <laughs> only, okay. This is something that can be done today. All this is free CB. So far the solutions are free CB. Uh, this is some logic. I mean, Kyle has written some uh, nice uh, tutorials on CB substitutions, and this is just some examples that could be used. I mean, you could basically uh, check if the user type is a super admin and do something. Or you can check, uh, there's great possibilities. You can check if a specific value is set in his profile. You can check against any other profile. I mean, you said if, for example, if the admin uh, if the admin field show promotions is turned on, then show the message here. <laughs> Simple examples. I mean, it, it's very powerful. You could do almost anything imaginable. And with the incubator project, uh, CB bot, you can put this logic into a Joomla article. So you can personalize the article. You can show the person viewing, hey, Nick, give it a nice image of Nick. I mean, uh, how, how, how are you today, and so on, and so on. And you might show specific content depending on specific values. So you might have time-released content. For example, if you have a, a subscription, memory subscription, you want to say, during the first week, this article will show this information. After that week, you hide it. It shows something else. It, the, just imagine the possibilities. <laughs> you can do anything you want with this. And the tools are there today. 
Excuse me. With release of CB 1.4, uh, we've implemented more changes to substitutions for adding parameters. Um, whenever using API to get field, it has different display types like a user list or a profile and that's exactly what the reason is. I'm telling it I want the avatar that displays like it does on a user list. That'll give me the linked thumbnail avatar instead of the full profile avatar which users are traditionally used to getting through substitution. So between reason and yes the Yes, uh, all the all the new additions are documented in my tutorial on my site, uh, which is seen in all my signatures on my forum post, which I'm going to be updating to be much more detailed and showing usage of all the new parameters. Okay. One of the items here, again, this is for ECB, is the Kunena sidebar. It's one of the integrations we've done with Kunena team. Uh, what we can do, basically, is we could put these type of substitutions in the existing user sidebar and the result will be basically here see my sidebar it tells me that I'm a professional member I've purchased CB subs this is taken from CB and it's automatically uh, shown on the sidebar of Kunina so you can show a nice icon if uh, their gender is female or uh, you can show a a badge. This is a CB Subs badge, basically. CB Subs image that's shown. But you can imagine the possibilities. You can basically personalize the sidebar, and if you're an admin, you might see this. You might even say other users cannot see. You can you can decide what's shown according to the viewer, also not only the poster. Okay, so you might have the hidden fields, the fi the admin fields, for example, that don't really show up. It might show up just for admins viewing. So you might uh, uh, imagine a community that you have a, a bad apple. You might want to tag them in, in a, with a CB field. And once they post, oh, give an alarm. This guy is dangerous. Be careful what you answer. <laughs> and so on. OK. Uh, I, I've shown here the content module, which if you know the Joomla custom module, which you could put HTML in there. Well, this is our replacement, basically. It could, you can put HTML in there, and you can have CB substitutions in there also. Uh, so it's very powerful. And not only that, but you can basically push uh, JavaScript into the header, which you can't really do that with uh, the Joomla custom module. An example here. This is a nice example. Uh, this is what the HTML code looks like. We have, if you visit the group Jive, page on Joomlapolis. If you're not an advanced member, you will see this. Get it now. And you click, it'll take you to the CB sub subscription page to become an advanced member to be able to download. If you are an advanced or professional member, you'll see download. So it's automatically, per you personalize call to actions depending on the viewer. It's much more powerful and you can think about the possibilities. I mean, on your uh, uh, either commercial end or even any kind of use case. You can attach files to profile. There's a community builder plugin, incubator plugin, sorry, the file field, which once you install it, you'll have a new field type called file, which you can create and, and manage it, put it on a profile. And what that means is people could upload a file to their profile or depending on uh, how you manage the, the field permissions just an admin can upload or a moderator can upload for, for the user to see. And an example here, so a lot of people wanted during the registration process to allow people to submit their CV, for example. And the CV would be part of the criteria used to approve or not approve a member by a moderator. This is just an example, but you can actually, it's a CV field. So once it's a field, you can check it to show on the registration field, on the registration page or not. Okay. And this is front end, so it's Ajax driven. Just click and you upload. Uh, privacy plugin, you can, 
basically install this and then uh, configure it to any tab or any field. So if you have uh, a field or a tab that you want the user to be able to decide who sees it or who doesn't, just install this, configure it, and then the user in the front end, for example, will see uh, date of birth. It's visible on profile only to logged in users, for example. Only registered users could see it. Or you can say only connections, only connections of a certain type. Okay, it's up to you to configure it from the back end, what you allow the user to do in the front end. Conditions field. This is a very powerful and it's been asked for again and again and again and Kyle basically implemented with uh, J, uh, uh, jQuery uh, functionality. What you can do basically is you decide to show a field depending on a different field value. So for example, this is, I'm editing a field A for example and I say if this field, it's a country field I guess, if this field is USA then show the state field and don't show the prefecture field. It's done automatically and it's, it, it works in the registration form or in the profile. And it's, very, it's much more powerful than that. I mean, you could basically uh, select, I don't know how you would use it, but you can basically say, I want to hide the field depending on the, the same field value. <laughs> so uh, you can have something set to yes, and once it's set to no, it's hidden and you cannot get it back. <laughs> yes? It's a, it's a multi-select, so you can select as many or as few fields as you like. Uh. Sorry, no problem. Uh, the progress field is another uh, plugin that gives functionality that people have been asking for. They want to be able to put uh, like a nice bar. Your profile is not 100% complete. There are, these two fields have been populated, but this third one has not, for example. And when combined, so this is how you set it up basically, you would set up, you want the bar to be blue and these three fields basically contribute to the completeness. You select which ones you want to push basically. And when combined with the redirect plugin, you can actually force users to update their profile. So imagine the case where you have a field that's not on the registration form, but is in the profile and it's mandatory. So you can register, you know, to get on the website, but people will never edit it, even though it's mandatory. What you can do with this, basically, you can force people that have not updated their profile to populate the specific required field to automatically be taken there again and again and again. If they try to go, try to go somewhere else, they'll be taken there again, and they're forced to do it. <laughs> That's one use case. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's one use case. I mean, you can, you, you're looking at it and the, the other people have different applications for it. I mean, some, some people say, uh, uh, for example, you can even combine this with conditional fields and say, you know, once they populate the mandatory field, you can show them something else. You can show them a coupon in a delimiter field. It's another nice one. <laughs> so it's another incentive. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's very, very powerful, yeah. I don't know, I'm lost, you wanna? <laughs> Coupons themselves have a lot of possible conditions. Um, I can quickly show it. So that we um, here, that's promotions in CB subs. We can set promotions. Set a new one here. So there's a lot of possibilities. Basic, you can say there's a coupon, code needed or not needed. If it's a percentage of the item price, 
in which case you have to indicate the percentage here. If it's a fixed amount, in case you would be putting the amount here, you could even say a cur currency for that. If it's a fixed amount which is subtracted or added from the item price, plus a per percentage, so you could say it's 5 euros discount and then 10% on the left, of on the result of that. You have all the same calculations, possibilities than for taxes in CB subs. If it's a fixed amount depending on the corresponding item price, so you could say, for instance, if, um, well, you need, to, of course, to put the steps. If the item price is 0 to 20 euros, you don't have any discount. If it's between 20 and 50, you have 1% discount. If it's between 50 and 100, you have um, 4 euro discount. <laughs> So it's that's that's for the that one. Then we can take the percentage of the item and select a CB field. For instance, uh, you could say, pr uh, depending on your forum ranking, <laughs> or depending on your karma, or depending on the profile completeness, you get a different percentage of discount on the coupon. Yeah. Profile completeness, it, it doesn't have reminders though. That's that's one feature it doesn't have. Um, that that's a possibility and, and it, it's it's a good feature request that could make it into the plug in period. This this is the kind of feedback we really value for incubator projects because it is an incubator project that nearly every user feedback that I've gotten has made it into the project. Um, the feature that redirects you to profile edit when a required field is incomplete was because users were having problems with CB subs hiding fields that were required and then later subscribing to that subscription and that field became active but then they never completed it with with uh, the progress field it'll force them back to their profile to complete that required field so having a email reminder is definitely something we can look into implementing And then we can have something which is very interesting to implement a wallet. You can have a fixed amount of discount or of markup uh, coming from a CB field. So you can select, for instance, a wallet, create a wallet field on which you put the amount that you want to discount or you owe that customer. And then you select to remove the amount from the CB field after this payment is completed. For instance, you could say that user he has helped in the forum, I give him a 20 euro discount on the next purchase he made. Tw uh, 20, the amount of 20 in that field. And um, that amount will be automatically subtracted from his next ordering. And when it's paid, the 20 are removed from his profile. That field be being hidden, of course, from him. But if he makes a purchase for 10 euros, you still have 10 left <laughs> on the profile. On the other side, if a user makes a chargeback on, your credit on his credit card and he owes you 30 euro, you can make put minus 30 on that field and his next purchase will be added 30 euro on the invoice. <laughs> so that's also very flexible here. Um, we ca you can say if it's exclusive to other promotions of the same priority. Same as with taxes, you can have multiple discounts and multiple priorities, meaning for instance, one discount that you give to everybody is 20% and people with a coupon has an additional 30% on top of the 20% going 
combined or added depending on the priority that you put here. Then we have a lot of conditions. Published publication, the start of promotion, end of promotion, maximum use cases in total for the whole site or per customer. You can decide to which plan you want to apply the promotion. And then we have advanced. You can say if it applies to registrations, to upgrade and or renewals. If it's applied in case of out recurring payments, um, only to the first payment or to the out recurring one. For instance, you could say people who pay one by one my yearly membership gets a normal price of 50 euro. And people who select to subscribe to automatic payment will be paying maybe 50 euro for the first and then only 30 per year. You reward them to automate the payment so they, they, um, they do it that way. Then you can require multiple plans to be purchased uh, at the same time. So for instance, you could say um, if you purchase only one template, you don't get any discount. If you purchase two templates, you get that much discount. If you purchase three templates, you get that other discount. Or you can say people who subscribe um, to the advanced plan and at the same time um, do a donation, they get a discount <laughs> on the whole, on, on the um, subscription. And then you can say that some plans must be existing and be in a given state active or expired. Or if they can are active, you can say if they are purchased at the same time, even though they are not active, it's still valid. And then you have a lot of possibilities. You can say that, for instance, a CB field, a given CB field, is equal to now, for instance. That that's or smaller than now. So you can say, for instance, if um, he members since well, that's maybe not the best example. If member since is more than. One month before, uh, one month before now, uh, then you apply that. So typically, you can make a discount being valid depending on the registration date. A member which is there since five years or more gets that discount because he is a senior member. <laughs> or you can say, I want to give that promotion to people who are there only since a week hey, get that additional thing um, during your first week of membership and get that discount. And then you can say um, uh, in which geographic region it is, to which groups it applies uh, for ACL. So that's for that one. Okay, uh, it's kind of late. I don't know if you want to go through it very fast now. The query field, query field basically allows you to grab any information from your existing database or an external database and show it as a field. Okay, there's a lot of applications. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. Groups, group jive. We went through that. We showed you that. Uh, charging for access is what CB subs does basically. It's a basic use case. You want to show. Uh, your various mem membership levels during the registration phase or to upgrade. This is how things look like on uh, Joomlapolis. Uh, badge for members. Once they become a member to a paid plan, you might give them a nice profile badge. It kind of helps keep the morale up. <laughs> and uh, you can have the form protection I showed. Remember I mentioned before, uh, you can protect any form area. This is what the URL parts, for example, look like. We're protecting category ID 154. So basically, all these are URL 
parts of Kunena to access that category. So anytime somebody tries to click on a URL that has this part in it, the protection kicks in and proposes the subscription that's needed. Yes? I don't understand. That's, that's what we use on our own site to um, prevent users which are not advanced member to post in the advanced forum while allowing everyone to see that forum part. Okay. Uh, different profiles. I mentioned before with CB subs, you could decide what tab goes to which subscriber or what field goes to which subscriber or what field is viewed by which subscriber or what tab is viewed by which subscriber and so on. It's very flexible. Uh, promotion scenarios. You saw some. You saw the back end. Uh, I think there are a lot of possibilities here that could be used in a lot of different ways. At least we have lots of ideas of how we're going to use it. And uh, I think it's probably, as Beth said before, it's very, very powerful. And you can do almost anything imaginable. And if we find something we can't do and we feel is very useful, we'll probably add it. And finally, uh, Okay, what, I, what we want you to take from this session is to understand that uh, Community Builder has lots of tools, has lots of functionality, has lots of things that you can add and combine to help you. It's clean, no hacks. We don't believe in hacking. If we can't do it cleanly, we, we don't do it. And it's, it's there today, and if you do not, uh, if you see that something is missing, you can extend it cleanly through the API. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, you'll leave this room with a different feeling about what's available today. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>